starting to record. Good evening. This is the WBAI town hall meeting for the 2024 Pacifica election cycle. It is an open forum for all candidates running for the local station boards, LSB elections. It is a place where all points of view are welcome and we encourage all to participate. The views expressed here are those of the candidates, not of the radio station or the Pacifica Foundation, and the debate is not sponsored or endorsed by any one candidate. We have one minute for questions and two minutes for answers. And uh, we're just going to take a little roll call. How many candidates do we have here? We have James Bingman, we have James Sagerton, we have Martha Rowan, and we have Matthew Reese. And uh, I think we'll start this by just kind of going around and allowing everyone to um, introduce themselves and talk a little bit about, um, I guess, why they're here, what inspired them to, to join us. And let's start with Martha Rowan. Martha? Hi. 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 I'll put my, my image up so people can see me. Um, hold on just a minute. Uh, yes, I'm Martha Rowan. I'm, uh, I'm a retired New York City school, uh, high school teacher and also college teacher. Uh, I've run for office for state senate and uh, city council. And I am one of the co-founders of Citizens Defending Libraries. Yeah. Um, I'm the I'm running for the board because an issue that has been at the forefront of most of what I've been doing is freedom of speech. For me, this is an absolutely essential uh, quality uh, or right, essential right for people to have in in any kind of a a, a democracy or republic or any kind of government which is actually livable. And I think it's I think that uh. WBAI as a radio station is in a especially um, important position to be able to be a a place where <clears throat> where freedom of speech can be not only encouraged but protected <clears throat> because it as as being radio it's not like the internet where it's easy to be tracked and traced. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's very very important for WBAI to uh, expand the range of uh, opinion that is expressed and to make sure that people are free to to I I believe that that will not only make uh, WBAI get more listeners because you'll have a wider range of of opinions to appeal to a wider range of people, but also it will in, have, give, you, give us a more engaged audience because if there is debate, when there is debate, when there is uh, con um, controversy even, or even confrontation, that's something that engages people. And uh, I think you will have people, not only more listeners, but more engaged listeners. Thank you, Martha. Um I think we have we have Matthew Reese, uh, the right side up. Matthew, um, <laughs> would you like to? That was quite it was quite an interesting results. thing. It felt like we had uh, zero gravity there. Uh, <laughs> Matthew, could you talk a little bit about who you are and and what makes you want to run for a can a position of, and on WBAI's board? Yes, and um... two minutes. Let me let me set it again. Thanks. Hold on. Say when. Okay. Thank you. And yes, I did study physics. So uh, turning the machine over uh, actually caused the uh, image to be uh, uh, 180 degrees different. Um, uh, I'm a journalist and I'm brought to BAI through the role of the journalism that I've done and uh, getting interviewed by uh, you Trice lead many years ago when when she ran the uh, ran the um, uh, ran the station and uh, being um, uh, on the air, etc. Uh, and actually, I believe BAI's best days were during the Vietnam War when it reported uh, data uh, 
uh, that uh, encouraged people to uh, to oppose the Vietnam War. And I believe it was one of the most important um, phenomena that brought an end to that war. And um, that was the high, the highest calling of BAI, and uh, BAI managed to achieve it. And uh, I believe in the journalism model of radio. Right now, um, you could pick up uh, the New York Times or Newsday or the Daily News or the Post in New York City or any of the other publications across the country and you we really don't i really don't trust them anymore i don't think most readers trust that stuff anymore and um that means it's open it's open season for a legitimate journalism entity a legit a, a, a legitimate journalism source to come in and provide some journalism we have a few journalists on the air but uh, I, I, I would use this station to, pro to provide information in the same way that you could go on YouTube and get any in, any get somebody talking about any topic at any time. Um, and uh, because. Um, OK, that's that's two minutes. Is that you, my minute? Yeah. Okay. Are you wrapping up or you, you need um, a little bit more? Well, just to, to sum it up. Because we did so well back to get to shut down the Vietnam War, we were we were, we were a very important part of the group that brought it to an end. I believe the uh, the Gaza War or wh whatever we want to call that a war or whatever we want to characterize that. Um, this is the time that BAI can do something and uh, provide a service, and people will will come. Well, thank you, Matthew. Um, we have two other uh, candidates. We have Jim and James. Um, so we're going to move to that. We went from the M's. We're going to the J's now. Um, how about uh, James Sagerton? Are you, are you ready, James? OK, so, so let me start the thing for two minutes and start it. OK. Yeah. So the question is, what brings us here today? Well, a little bit about um, yourself and what brings you here today. Yeah, we're candidates, obviously. Everybody on this call that I can see on the uh, participants list is uh, well aware of what we're doing here and um, what we're about. Um, I will just say that uh, my recent experience as the treasurer on the Pacific, of the Pacific National Board, as chair of the Finance, the National Finance Committee, the last several years, has given me a good understanding of the situation in terms of our financial crisis. Of course, we also have an audience crisis. And a political crisis, the audience crisis, of course, is that our audiences are not where they need to be in order to generate the funds we need, in order to have the impact that we should have with this priceless asset that we've got, these radio signals. And uh, the uh, political crisis is, of course, the uh, what we uh, here at WBI and other places around the network uh, have... Uh, Nicknamed the New Day Group, it's a group of people on the national board who vote in lockstep and who um, basically have policies that are opposed, in my opinion, to democracy within Pacifica and to WBAI's existence in particular. So um, that is what brings me here. We have a financial crisis, we have an audience crisis, and we have a political crisis within Pacifica. So um, there are ways to solve the all of those, we need management that will implement them. And um, that's been part of our problem and it's continuing to be a part of our problem as far as I can see. Okay. And that's right on time. We just ended. Okay. And now we have um, Jim Dingman. Jim? All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let me talk about what's going on right now. Uh, for the past couple of months, the amount of people actually donating to the station has declined 90% uh, from the figure we had back in May. So we had uh, $70,000 in, um, in donations that have been reduced to $7,000, which about half of that is from David Watsonberg. So one of the things we have to immediately do is figure out how to stop that problem from continuing because there's no way that the station can continue uh, even with 
bringing in union money, which I also think is finite, with that few amount of people listening to it. So that's problem number one. How do we deal with that? Um, I would, you know, I'm planning to go in and do a director inspection. I'm now in the PNB. I want to do a director inspection. I've already announced I was going to do that. I'm going to get that done. I want to see exactly where we're at. And uh, in terms of the kind of things that are needed, um, I have to see where these two folks are at, you know, because we have to separate out, you know, what we felt about what just happened two months ago from the general well-being of making sure that a station will survive in New York City. Uh, and, you know, to me, I'm committed to that. Um, I should add that uh, the thing I definitely want to see happen now is uh, I want to make sure that we immediately start to multi-platform the station. It has to happen. It just we're, we're, we're like 20 years overdue doing that. And we got to start to do that. So, but the money situation with the listeners is the, to me, the most uh, serious problem that has to be addressed immediately. And I will definitely mobilize people to do that. I was on the verge of doing that before they fired Linda and Berthold. And um, that I feel uh, still a lot of that still has a very nasty uh, craw in my throat over what went down with those two people. Thank you. Okay, that's um, everyone's introduction and why they're here. And um, let's start with a few questions. And I'm going to mix it up so that everyone has a chance to answer first and last. And uh, I'll, read, I'll read the question. Our country is divided by culture wars and political team sports and on the brink of war on two fronts in the Mideast and in Eurasia. Within this context, people have developed very strong opinions. Sometimes views are based on facts and other times on propaganda. And in the fog of war, it's often difficult to discern between the two without the benefit of dialogue and debate. Unfortunately, intellectual discourse, yeah, excuse me, becomes contentious these days as people tend to close their minds and dig in their heels. How then can programming be done that remains entertaining and true to our mission of comprehensively reporting on news that affects our communities, but accomplished in a way that minimizes discord and alienation? For example, some former listener members reported that they ended contributions to WBAI because they disliked Gary Knowles' criticism of Big Pharma. And other people uh, stopped their contributions because Gary Knoll was gone. So, you know, it's, it's almost you can't win. They felt so strongly that they overlooked the fact that Gary also promoted the need for informed consent and consumer protection against captured regulatory agencies and that Gary sought to uphold the Nuremberg Code against the use of coercive tactics and mandates for experimental medical treatments. Others said they ended contributions because Democracy Now! regularly repeats the State Department's false narratives on black flag operations, such as 9-11, on assassinations coordinated by the CIA, such as that of President Robert F. Kennedy, and on regime change covert wars globally that supported BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard investment funds over the needs of the American public. Keep in mind, BlackRock already has the reconstruction contract for Ukraine in its bag. Further, it has been asserted that WBAI lost a considerable amount of financial support and many regular listener members because of sympathies expressed for Palestinians and criticism of Israel. Within this context, should Pacifica support a narrow club of sympathetic users, sympathetic listeners, or a wider audience with more divergent views that are potentially antagonistic to each other? So that's the first question. And the second one is, should Pacifica avoid controversy and reconsider its mission statement 
that includes the need to promote the full distribution of public information to obtain access to sources of news not commonly brought together in the same medium and to employ such varied sources in the public presentation of accurate, objective, comprehensive news on all matters vitally affecting our communities. So um, how, can we, how can we have divergent opinions and keep it positive? How do we not alienate each other? Um, how do we do all that? Um, let's start with uh, uh, James Sagerton. James? Um, gee, Gloria, that was a, a textbook length question. <laughs> thanks, thanks for coming to me first. Uh, <laughs> there's so much in there. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't even know where to begin. Well, I gave uh, you a lot of room. <laughs> I will say, indeed. <clears throat> I will say that um, um, one way to do this is to bring debate to the air. Debate is good radio. People like debate. People like hearing both sides of an issue. Too often in our programming, we're presenting one-sided arguments. <clears throat> we're talking to a bubble, and <clears throat> it's boring in, to a certain extent. So um, I think we need to bring debate into the picture. Um, and then there was... Uh, <clears throat> um, the question of, <clears throat> excuse me, um, basically you, you brought up the question of, with the uh, whole Palestine versus Israel question, we did lose a lot of listeners when that change came about. And it had, it was a bigger issue, really. It was a question of uh, bringing cultural diversity into our programming and into our station, into our staff, um, into our programmers. And the question of basically maintaining a mainstream um, outlook and appearance to the outside world. So unfortunately, I don't think we necessarily did the best job of using cultural diversity as a teaching tool and make that transition um, helpful to our listeners, who some many of whom left us because of the way it was done. And um uh, to our the station itself, because we lost a lot of members and our membership has been continuing to go down. And um, obviously, as I said earlier, we need the audience to get the members. You know, one, one out of 10 listeners becomes a member. That's a general rule of thumb. And without the audience, we don't get the members. And therefore, we don't have the revenue we need to continue operating the station. So um, I just think we need it. We need to handle the cultural diversity question better. There are still some questions I have about how we do it. Uh, could possibly be done better. Uh, on the Gary Knoll question, uh, there's some good, there's some bad about Gary Knoll. Some people love him, some people hate him. Personally, he was the person who guided me into, and by listening on the radio, into the world of organic foods and you know improved diet, you know, caution about products and chemicals and products. There are many other people who have guided others into that same world. Gary Knoll wasn't a necessity. He just happened to be the one that I was aware of. And I think he's, you know, he's a very useful person for the station, for audience, for membership, and for information. I don't like everything he says. I don't agree with everything he says. But I certainly believe we should have a place for him on our radio station not least because, after all, over all the years that he was on our air, he raised millions of dollars for WBAI and Pacifica. And I don't think it was fair that he was basically being frozen out before he chose to resign. And um, that's a, there's a lot of backstory to all of that that I can't really go into. But uh, I, I hope and I will work towards making a place for Gary in the future on the station. How much time are you doing? How much time do you, you have? You, you're good. You, you're okay. You're, you you did great. <laughs> um, I'll save the rest for later. Okay. Um, Martha, um, would you like me to restate the question part or you got it? 
I think I think I got the the, the, the gist, gist of, of both parts, and I, I totally agree with James Sagerton. He he stole my my um, my Under. first point by uh, <laughs> by mentioning debate. I I think that's one of the reasons why we need to have a broader range of opinions on the station. I think, but not only do I think that debate is a great way to build an audience because. You know, it's interesting. It 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 attracts uh, people and it gets people engaged. But it's also, I think, a way of dealing with the second part of your question, Gloria, and that was the question of of um, of uh, how how we can navigate disagreements without dealing with terrible hostility. And I think debates is a great way to do it because. It, it, first of all, it it sets up a structure that makes it really hard for people to just throw slurs and slant. Not that this doesn't sometimes happen in debates; it it obviously does. But there, it's it's it makes it harder when you're dealing either face to face or voice to voice with a, another real human being to just uh, retreat into your um, your your frozen ideas and just attack, attack, attack against some made up enemy. So I think that debating is, is some form or another of debate, either a structured debate where you have people from who have different programs get together and have a specifically um, organized debate or a kind of a friendly debate or at least respectful debate that takes place more informally from one program to another where somebody might say, oh, Gary Nell was talking about vaccines the other day or whatever, assuming he grew back on the, um, on the, uh, on yeah. WCI, which I certainly hope he would be. Um, uh, I don't think so. I don't agree with that. As a fact, I have an expert who has a different opinion. Or if we're dealing with something to do with with the war in Israel, in, in the Middle East, Gaza, which is now not just Gaza and and Israel, it's also Lebanon and God only knows what else in the next in the next few days or months uh, to have people on on who uh, who have the varying di uh, dis, um, opinions but to but when it's in the form of a debate and this is the, the the thing is that when you have more diversity on a platform it it makes it harder for people to retreat into their into their frozen positions and i think I personally think that with some hiccups at the beginning, it would end up increasing our audience enormously and getting uh, getting much more engagement, which would also mean more money. Thank you, Martha. Um, how about uh, Jim Dingman? Jim, what what do you um, what do you think? I, well, obviously, there has to be diversity of opinion. Uh, that's been a issue that is, uh, you know, obvious and inherently a problem and debated about for the past 30 to 40 years on all the Pacific stations and in New York. Um, you know, one person's truth is another person's bullshit. And, uh, let's start with the Gary issue. The Gary issue, you know, I certainly didn't agree with a lot of what Gary had to say, but that's my opinion. Other people felt that Gary was terrific. And, Gary's audience was also incredible. Uh, people forget that, like, at one point, Gary was carrying 60% of the bills uh, when I first started to go on the air uh, many years ago. So, you know, it's not what I think. It's what was best for the station and in general. And so, you know, what Gary has his point of view. And I felt that we were particularly targeted by what occurred in terms of that whole uh, complaint brought to the FCC, which was couched in, you know, puerile Victorian, oh, it's so terrible that Gary's doing this, that kind of crap. And I felt like, you know, their real objective was to skewer us, which they've succeeded in doing. 
So, an issue with Gary, I, I'm 100% in favor of Gary being brought back. Now, the problem is we have the consent decree. So, the consent decree imposes certain kind of conditions on us that did not exist before. So, we have to adjust to that, and we're not making a good adjustment to that. That's obvious in terms of the amount of money coming in. Now, in terms of the opinions, look, uh, that's why I've always wanted to multi-platform the station. I want to get from 168 hours a week to 300 to 400 hours a week of content. Uh, because, you know, for example, some of our colleagues felt there should have been uh, this reporting of this uh, People's Forum event up in Harlem. Yeah, I agree. That should be available for people to listen to. And there should be other opinions available that are well-informed, that are intelligent, that offer different interpretations of information all the time. Too many people come in here and think that this is a voice of a vanguard, uh, that this is a, a station or stations that should be, quote, uh, propaganda vehicles for particular political tendencies. That's not in the mission statement. That's contrary to the mission statement. It is important for people to hear ideas that are unpopular, but to have them predominate and be, oh, if something else is said that conquers that, oh, it's not, uh, it shouldn't be on the airways. Well, that's baloney. And I could argue, you know, with great, uh, you know, examples about all sorts of things that have been on the air that pissed me off, but they deserve to be on the air. So anyway, um, you know, okay. I think it's an important issue, and there should have obviously be diversity. I totally agree with both what Martha and Jim had to say. Okay, and now we have Matthew Reese. Matthew, are you with us? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Um, uh, just a question: uh, What is the audience uh, to this uh, event that we're on right now? Who is observing this? We have Carolyn Burden, who is a board member. Mitchell. Oh, no, no. In other words, it's just the 11 people listed here, correct? Yes. Okay. We, we do have a, a call in that I'm not sure who it is. Um, can the call in user number three please identify themselves? Um, it just oh, says I call in user three. Does anyone know who that is? No idea. Uh, call in user three. Could you please it identify says, yourself? It says user one on my computer. Oh, maybe. Yeah, it is user one. Sorry. <laughs> I can't see. User one. Um, phone call. Um, could you identify yourself? Okay, well, they're quiet. Um, I guess that's it. All right, so so Matthew, do you want to answer the question? Um, you know, how how do how do we um, how do we manage this situation? Could you, could you just reiterate, of course, uh, in in about five or six words, how do we answer what again? Within this context, should Pacifica support a narrow club of sympathetic listeners or a wider audience with more divergent views that are potentially antagonistic to each other? Should Pacifica avoid controversy and reconsider its mission statement that includes the need to promote the full distribution of public information to obtain access to sources of news not commonly brought together in the same medium and to, and to employ such varied sources in the public presentation of accurate, objective, comprehensive news on all matters uh, vitally affecting the community? Well, the quality of the presentation uh, is going to reflect on whether it's objective or not. Um, uh, major newspapers, tele uh, 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 television, and uh, uh, the internet is not terribly objective. It's not easy for people to be objective unless they're trained to be objective. Um, as far as controversy... It's good to have controversy. Controversy, uh, we learn from controversy. We get the extreme um, evidence for both sides of the story. We want that. It's interesting. And it is, uh, it's good radio. It's good media. Um, as far as the range of 
topics, the range of opinions. We want, we always want a, a wide range of opinions. Uh, we want to learn. So it is, um, uh, it is the city that teaches according to, um, uh, let's see, who was that? Was that um, Aristotle or, or um, Socrates? I don't recall. The city teaches. Uh, people bring things up. They have their side of the story and um, other people have the other side of the story. So it's always good to have a wide range. But, um, but basically, these things only come into play if people are listening. And... Um, uh, what will bring them to the table is news. And right now there's so much garbage. I mean, if you want to read about the election, for example, you're going to get, everyone is going to tell you about the polls and about these little tiny increments of everything. But uh, to be honest, I uh, what I find interesting about these elections is that uh, they don't appear to be elections at all. Um, it looks like the, the two parties take turns and decide these things in advance and 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 there's there's reasoning behind this sort of a I dare call it a cynical approach uh, but we're not going to hear it unless there is a fairly broad range of um, of discussion and uh, thank you okay we have another candidate that's shown up uh, Charles can you please introduce yourself and let us know? What brought brought you here tonight, and what brought you to um, WBAI? Good evening, everybody. My name is Charles Nijirika. Um I joined the uh, the Zoom meeting tonight because I received an invitation, and because I'm running for office to ensure that um, I bring the perspective of uh, people that speak like me, that look like me, that feel disadvantaged in some ways that feel left out, um, to be like their voice and um, bring their perspective to the table and um, to make sure that uh, if there are places that are left out, if there are some fringes that are left out, I'm able to point that out because I belong there. So in a nutshell, that is what I did. Okay. Um... And have you been with WBAI long or have you been doing things that, you know, um, you'd want people to know about? Um, yes, this is my fourth year. I, I ran the last time two years ago. Unfortunately, I didn't make it. And uh, since that time, I've been doing my own little way. Uh, making sure that I listen to programs that uh, make a difference, uh, contributing my ideas, and uh, also ensuring that um, the first one did not uh, make me chicken out, and that's why I'm running again, uh, because I believe I can still make a difference, and I believe that people uh, who I represent need to have their own voice heard and uh, their ideas looked at. So. Yes, uh, I make contributions where necessary, financially and otherwise. I listen to see what is going on. I bring my opinion on the table, whether it's uh, uh, taking cognizance of or not, but I take it upon myself to make sure that I speak up and uh, make sure that um, what I feel is uh, is brought to the, to the table and brought to the attention of those that are concerned. Okay. Um... Oops. Okay. Um, everyone else had answered a question. I'm not going to read the whole question because it's a bit. It's a bit much. I'm just going to jump to the um, jump to the point, and that is. Let's see. Uh, okay. I lost it. Okay. Um, should Pacifica support a narrow club of sympathetic listeners or a wider audience with more divergent views? that are potentially antagonistic to each other? Should Pacifica avoid controversy and reconsider its mission statement 
that includes the need to promote the full distribution of public information to obtain access to sources of news not commonly brought together in the same medium and to employ such varied sources in the pub public presentation of accurate, objective, comprehensive news on all matters vitally affecting the community. Okay, take it away. <laughs> Hello, Lauren. Charles, would you like to answer that question? Because everyone else had a chance. Basically, um, it could be controversy or not. Um, no. Is it good to have different opinions? Is it good to have debate and dialogue? Or is it better to just have one message that WBAI gives out? I, I believe it's always always better to have divergent views. I believe it's always better to have um, um, various forms of, uh, of voices and uh, issues, not to just uh, take one and run away. Um, it's, it's, it's not um, one person, one source that will have solutions. Sometimes somebody brings a perspective that you never thought of before. Sometimes, even from what I did not expect, something important might just crop up and say, wait a second, I didn't look at it this way. So it is always better to have um, different voices and perspectives, even if debating them, sometimes shouting, sometimes disagreeing, but in the end, settling to an idea that has been looked at and walked on instead of just taking one idea and then running with it. Okay, thank you. Um, I see a hand up. Are are you raising your hand uh, to ask a question to the or to the uh, candidates, or um, is it something else? Um, I'm calling on the person, user number one. It's a phone. Ooh, could you identify yeah, it's yourself? It's me. It's me. I'm here. Who's me? Um, yeah, just a comment. Uh... Oh, who is me? Ask anybody who's uh, on the panel there. I, I'm sorry. Right. Could you they please don't say, say your name? Right. Just say your name. You don't have to give it's you your me. last name. It's me. I me. Me. It's me. I identify as me. Is that okay? Um, All right. I, I guess. Okay. Is is you know? Let's get to the meat of it. Okay, do you have a question for the candidate? Well, I have a statement on the statement. Um, it sort of comes off as a question, but it's really a statement, and it's a historical recap. And the word should is in there. And we've been, I'll say it that way, we have been doing the one thing that it's asking for a long time. So based on results, it's not working. But they refuse to see what doesn't work, actually act on it. So we have been saying the one pretty much thing. Uh, I, if you break down the stations operating and what they choose to put on the air, it's only about two or three subjects, and it's all from one side. So it's, it's hurt the station. It could be innovative if it opens up a, a, a debate where you actually have, it would be the only radio station that I could, I know about that has open debate on both of both sides. But that would be dangerous because once one side starts kind of gaining on a particular subject and, and wins out, it's going to really burn the other people. So they're going to say, now nah, we got to stop this. So, but it would be innovative to have an open debate station where you have people on both sides rather than one side, right? So we've been operating the one side. You know, Lou Hill killed himself because he didn't like who took over the station. He went into depression. It's documented. He, he You know, they, they talked about that. And it, it basically turned into mostly communists. He didn't like it. And so it's been one-sided mostly for a long, long, long time. And it's, it's reached a point now in, in our age, my last time to not here, that 
society's moving on. You know, communism is not as important in this country working it's working within it in this country as it used to be they, they they're making that they're saying some things in politics about it but it's not that important okay the racism okay. it's not that it's not that important okay. you know, so um, I'm, tying the, I'm tying i'm tying the knot I'm maybe maybe 10 seconds okay it's 10 not that important it. people are moving on and if you don't move on with the whole of society which is more mixed more integrated so you can't be one-sided if you want to go along with everybody who's more integrated, right? Mm-hmm. That's what we're all striving for. Mm-hmm. So why is it all one-sided on a particular one. racism Retail. or this or that? One. And that guy, I'm only joking, but he sounds like Netanyahu, that guy. All right. All I'm right, just thank joking. you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hi, Jim. Uh, hi, uh, Gloria. I'm going to listen because I haven't heard anything except Mario. And after I hear Mario, I just want to tell Mario, Mario, you should send some money and you should vote because people that send money can vote. And when you send money, you can vote and talk and be a member of the station. Thank you, Jim. I'll just listen, Gloria. I know. uh... Okay. well, I I gave the first question Um, Do some some other people in our group want to ask the next question to our um, candidates. I have other questions to put in, but if someone has a question, you know, we can it's the interactive process. I just wanted to start it off. Um, okay, I'll, I'll just go with the next one while you guys think of, of questions you want to he- hear the answers to from our candidates. Um, the mission statement seeks to promote and aid cre- creative activities which will serve the cultural welfare of the community. Do we play the right amount and type of music, especially since music often reflects culture and politics? Um, let's see. Let's start with Matthew, Matthew Reese. Do we play the right music? Do we play enough of it? What do you think? Matthew, are you with me? Matthew's gone. We lost Matthew. Okay. No more Matthew. All right. Uh, Martha, since you identified Matthew's missing, would you like to uh, comment on <laughs> teach, the, you know, teach the type of music and the amount of music? And um, that since music often reflects culture and politics. Well, I certainly think that a, a wide range of, um, of subjects in general and, and uh, music in particular, I think it's important that music, I honestly don't know uh, enough about what the music selections are on WBAI. Uh, but um, I think that's something that, you know, maybe some viewer in, uh, I mean, listener input would be useful for that. But, um, and also lo- the talent that's local to New York um, is, is something to to search out. But I also agree with something that Jim mentioned, Jim Digman mentioned before, and that's the, the idea of, of expanding the platform. I mean, if one looks at what's on the various different video platforms, such as YouTube, um, uh, uh, Rumble, Odyssey, et cetera, and other uh, internet platforms, there's such a wide diversity of not just opinion and discussion and and I also agree with Matthew Rice that it's really important to have a, a really good quality news. I think that's very important. Um, but uh, it's those are places if if we can make connections with with the the enormous amount of talent and uh, subject matter that's out there through expanding our platform, because I understand that there you know technology that really makes that possible for our and it would also be in another way to bring in um, listeners and to bring in money um so yes um unfortunately i'm, I'm not enough I'm not particularly knowledgeable on the subject of music so i i don't feel that i can say much more than yes i think it's really important to make sure we have really good quality enough really good quality music offered on the station. 
Thank you. Um, Charles, what, what do you think about our musical selection? Um, I think personally that um, they are doing their best. Uh, the, the programs I've listened to, I think they are doing their best with the selection. Um, even though there is always uh, room for improvement, and sometimes the the choice of music and the the degree that is selected could also depend on who is present, uh, who is in charge of the program or the, uh, or the issue being talked about. Some people um, they have an idea of the right music to suit what is being talked about. Some might not um, be knowledgeable in that area. They might just be generalist. We could just pick something they feel is adequate to cover um, the program. But um, I think there's always room for improvement. So far, I think they are doing well. And um, if I'm if I'm to talk to them, Mark, I, I will say I'll say seventy five eighty percent. Okay. And um, how about Jim Dingman? What do you what do you think about our music? We were talking a little bit earlier about uh, show tunes. What should be on WBAI? Well, yeah. and do we have enough music? All right. Well, first of all, uh, we have great music shows and we have great music shows throughout the system. And one of the things I've always felt we should do as a network is and this is where, you know, the whole Pacific across America stuff, which people got angry about when they shut us down. Well, one thing we could do, if we could figure out a way to deal with the ASCAP BMI issues is to band together, bound together all these different music shows and offer them uh, to everybody throughout the network. Like that would be a digital way to do it. And because they've got great music shows everywhere, Washington, Texas, uh, uh, Los Angeles and Berkeley. Uh, you know, we got great music shows. And, uh, and you know, that gets into one of the things that is in the mission statement about art uh, programming. We basically stink in New York. Uh, I don't really, you know, people can argue all they want with me about this. We are completely out of touch with the artistic community of the city of New York and the metropolitan area. And we are, frankly, one of the great capitals of the world in terms of all sorts of artistic production. We're just out of that. And that is, to me, always been one of our big weaknesses. So uh, there's lots of things we can do to change that. Uh, when I was in charge of the community advisory board, at one point I had 10 theater groups coming in and using the space at 120 Wall Street. So if we're thinking big, we should think about getting a space like we used to have at the church, uh, which was a place where people could perform. And I'm, I, I'm totally opposed to this idea of just you know doing digital AI type radio. I think that's cool, but we also have to look on the issue of you know developing and having space, and one of the things that just happened in in Los Angeles was unfortunately the deal fell through, but because we were able to have young Jackson Brown as a pop star coming up, and he would play at KPFK when he was coming up, well, he came up with a great idea that allowed us to basically uh, renovate the, the station uh, space in Los Angeles. And then moved back in with 10 years free rent. Unfortunately, that deal fell through because one of the people involved had a heart attack. But that just gives you a sense of how we need to be in touch with the artistic community. And Mitchell's on this phone call. I'll never forget when Mitchell brought in all those young people to perform downstairs at uh, 388. We should have been doing that every goddamn month ever since then. That's the kind of stuff we need to do. Okay, great. Um, how about James Sagerton? Let me unmute him. He's, he had some. Okay, James, are you there? James Sagerton? Hello, James. He had some um, background noise, so I muted him. I'm trying to get him back. Asked to unmute. Oh, I'm here. Okay, great. Yeah, the, the question was on music. Um, do we have the right amount of music? Do we have um, the right type of music? What do you think about our music? Um, and especially that music often reflects culture and politics. Yeah, that's kind of like the third rail of politics in, <laughs> in a way. Um, 
you know, uh, do we have the right kind of music? What's the right kind of music? Do we have enough of it? How much is enough? Um, you know, one thing that is has been said at the national uh, in the national debates, uh, especially by the executive director, is that uh, some of our programs we'd be better off if we just shut them off and played music because we'd get a better audience. Our audience at WBI is it hovers around 0.1, 0.2%. And sometimes if we just played music, we'd get a better audience and we'd be able to get more members and and pay our bills better. But of course, that's not what we're about. Um, Yeah, we should have a full range of music. We should have a great diversity of music. Music is widely available now on the internet. So it's not like people are going to be coming to us to look for music um, that's popular. We also have a legacy of music. We have Concert World Latina. Um, on the weekends, we have you know Tony Ryan is uh, although he's passed away, he's is he's still on the air with his Soul Central Station. That's very popular. It's got a legacy audience. So we need to protect our legacy audiences. We need to branch out into new kinds of music. Um, we need to do what the mission statement says, which is present material or, and present voices that are not normally heard in the in the um, in the mainstream of this uh, particular media. So, you know, what's on radio as far as music, we should kind of be doing um, not that, but other things that present some diversity. Um, uh, we, you know, we've had opera, we've had um, movement music, folk music. Um, so we have to we have to find a mix with cultural diversity, with that which attracts an audience, the, such that it can pay for the cost of putting it out there, and um, such that we keep to the mission statement of presenting a, having a cultural side and also um, pre- presenting new things in culture. We want to be on the edge with the innovation in culture and present new sounds. So, yeah, there's not enough time in a broadcast day to do all we should or could do with music. That's another reason for uh, diversifying our platforms, becoming a multimedia um, uh, uh, platform and um, having other ways of uh, getting our messages and our music out other than just the broadcast radio. Thank you, James. Um, Okay. I have another question. If anyone else wants to throw a question in, that would be great. Uh, If you do just raise your hand. Okay. I'm not seeing any hands. So I'll go to the next question. Um, Gloria, excuse me. You got one, Jack. You got a question. No, I'm not going to ask you a question. I just want to say that, uh, when I was a teenager, I listened to WBAI because they were playing music nobody else was playing. And then I also listened to WBAI because it had information about various things, uh, uh, about movement or progressive or politic or various things. Uh, what Mario says there's too much of, I don't find enough of. There's very little, very little justice in America and very little news about what's wrong with our justice. Uh, uh, what's our problem? But much more importantly, uh, I, I used to listen to one particular radio show because it had the type of music that I supported the station for. And then I got involved in the politics of the station because free speech is much more important than music. However, Mitchell Cohen put something in the chat, which is really true. They play the most eclectic and the best music you can listen to, sometimes at night. And uh, what what, uh, James and Jim said, what uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Charles, Charles, uh, what Charles said, uh, as we all know, it's up to the producers. And uh, sometimes they play the greatest stuff and it integrates into the conversation. And that's why WBAI is so invaluable because music is the cultural part. And then there's the other part, which is what are we talking about? What are we all about? I think we're about uh, peace. I think we're about not getting taken away by uh, lies. And I appreciate the fact that you let me say something. Uh, I'm going to sit back. I just got off the highway. So I'm still traveling at 70 miles an hour. All right, Jack. Thank you so much. Um, All right. So, the next question, the Pacifica network and stations are democratically governed by elections. How much airtime should be devoted to showcasing our internal processes? Um, insider baseball. 
For instance, should town halls such as this be broadcast on the air? And let's start with um, Jim, uh, Jim Digman. Jim? Well, um, <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm all in favor of them publicizing these town halls. There's enough people who are on the web at this point that we can successfully do these as podcasts. I mean, obviously, yeah, it'd be great to have it on. But then, you know, sometimes these town halls, uh, you know, we can say things that we can't say on the air because the FCC is there. And then also, you know, there's we've had town halls where people have been rather blunt and candid about things. And uh, in some cases said comments about other people that uh, would essentially have them suppressed on the air. So, you know, that's a problem. Now, um, the whole town hall function is to basically have people have a way to express themselves freely without essentially being uh, inhibited. And that's at least how I've wanted to run them for the past couple of years. And that's how, indeed, I try to run them. So whether it be on the air or not, it, yeah, it would have to be different if it's moderated. But the other thing is, you know, the question of how the whole uh, governance process is projected onto the listeners. Um, this gets back to the issue of really trying to have people try to solve the concrete problems in the station, uh, which we know exist because we only have uh, seven, six to seven people who are full time employees. And we used to have close to 30, 35, uh, probably close to 40 back in, in the 60s. <clears throat> so that's where volunteers come in. And uh, there is a need to have a reasonable volunteer culture in the station where people are just coming in to really help the whole prospect, not to basically go in and get over with their own political agendas or come in and use it as a way to get airtime. Some of the people, most the biggest harassers of the management is basically like trying to maneuver for airtime right now. It sort of abuses the hell out of me. So, you know, the question of, you know, really going in there and trying to solve the problems, that to me is important. And that's where the town hall and the people running for the LSB you have to realize you got to, you know, roll up your sleeves. There's going to be a lot of hard work to do if they're elected. And if they're not elected, we need your help, too. Thanks. Thank you. Um, how about. OK, we lost Matthew. All right. How about Charles? Charles, um, what do you what do you think about um, having these type of. Um, venues, this type of town hall um, on on the air. Thank you so much. Um, I would prefer that um, we keep it the way it is. Um, there is this consciousness about being in the air. And I think some people feel uh, a little inhibition because they're in the air. Um, some try to watch what they say, the way they say it, they don't come out naturally because who knows who is listening, who is um, taking a note and all that. So um, sometimes, even when they say some things, they don't really express it in the way that ordinarily they would have done. That is this uh, concept that, you know, I'm somewhere and maybe I'm being watched or checked and all that, like, like regimentation or something. You know, if that is the right word. So I think it is it is good to keep it here so people feel like they're safe um, to be themselves and discuss frankly and all that. And then there are some uh, issues people want to raise, but because they feel this that might not be the right arena to raise it and they might not raise it. So I am, I am supporting that um, we keep it off the air and keep it the way it has been. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Martha, uh, what do you think about this type of um, uh, discussion being on the air as opposed to um, being recorded? Um, well, we had a forum, I think, earlier on that was, it was not just for WBAI, but it was uh, uh, it, and it was moderated by somebody uh, 
from Pacifica, if I remember correctly, and I think that was on the air. I think it's a good idea to have at least one or two candidate forums that are on the air for if, for people who might just, they're not going to go to the website, they don't necessarily know, they're not really looking at their email, and if they just stumbled across it, it would be a good way to um, remind people and, and get them engaged. However, to make to make it all of them or even a majority, I think uh, I agree that they're that that's fraught with uh, possible difficulties. Also, aren't the monthly uh, board meetings? Don't they have a half hour where uh, people can speak? I, I don't. That's not the same as candidate forums, but it is a a, a kind of a, a a a forum where 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 listeners can speak out and also hear what's going on um the um uh, and and i think there are other town halls as well that are available uh I, and this these these town halls th these forums are being recorded and they're going to be put on the website so they are available for people uh so they can find out what's going on but it's true that if it were on a, uh, on the radio and it were call in probably we would get more uh, engagement and questions from from listeners but i'm not sure that having more than one or two of those in in the election cycle is is a good idea okay thank you martha um james sargaton okay oh, let's see some on this one, <laughs> um, yeah, there's an old theory that uh, as community radio, as uh, democratically operated Pacifica, dating from back around the turn of the century, that we should do all of this kind of governance, have all kinds of governance reporting, report to the listener from the general manager, report to the listener from the program director, report to the listener from the LSB. Um, report to the listener from the Committee of Inclusion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You find that radio professionals, people like program directors and general managers, don't think that's a good idea because it doesn't make good radio and it chases the audience away. People who are grand advocates of community radio and involving the community and running things democratically like the idea of having more governance on the air. I have to agree with the last speaker and say I think somewhat down the middle is the way to go. You don't want to ruin the audience and chase the audience away because they're not particularly interested. And just as a rule of thumb, you take a thousand listeners out of those thousand listeners, about a hundred of them become members or 10%. Out of that hundred that become listeners, going to become members rather, we struggle as we see now to get 10% of them to vote and thus the 10% quorum that we have in our elections. And of those 10% of the 100, which is now 10, who actually vote, only about 1% of them actually get involved in governance. So it's a very small percentage of our overall involvement with the public that wants to get all involved and wrapped up in this governance stuff. It's basically one person out of 1,000 that's listening to, to WBAI or Pacifica stations. So I think we have to be careful about overemphasizing it on the air, but it is who we are. We are, we invented democratic governance. We're the only, as I keep saying this, we're the only democratically operated listener sponsored um, broadcast entity network, if you will, in the world, I think. I, nobody's ever contradicted me on that. So it is something we want to promote. We want to flout it. We want to put it out there. But we also don't want to chase the audience away with it. Okay. Um, I just, could I just add one more quick thing? Sure. Sure. I want to say um, somebody, I think it was uh, perhaps Mitch, uh, Mitch Cohen in the comments mentioned James Ursay, who we missed. And, um, but certainly his programs are timeless and we can broadcast them. A, you know, they're evergreen, if you will. Um, also, I, I wanted to mention Wuji Jacobs's uh, program of African music. I love that program. He does a good mix of music um, and uh, politics, which is uh, very, very uh, popular and and um, entertaining. And uh, it 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 gathers an audience. It's interesting. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, 
we have a hand up. I think it is our friend me. Um, okay, me, can you keep Hello? it to? Can you keep it? Uh, yeah. Can you keep it to a minute? Thank you. Okay. Uh, I get only a minute. Okay. The public only gets a minute. Okay. Um, so first, I don't appreciate that I'm a member of the public attending this meeting, and then someone who's running for the board has, you know, I become the target of debate. You know, st you know, take your own inventory and take the inventory of how the station's running, not my comments. You know, there's not a debate about debate the the, uh, the public. It's what are you going to do? That's part of my question. I've been around a long time and I've been attending cab meetings for 2005, six, seven, eight, with Jim Dingman running them at the church on 6th Street. And on and on up to today, up to this meeting and many candidates. I ran for the board myself in 2012 and then again. You know how many hundreds, hundreds of ideas from everybody? And I can't really point out today, talking to you in this moment, if anything that was meaningful was ever implemented. I mean, really meaningful. You know, a radio show or a music show, yeah, we put that on. But anything meaningful, of any kind of campaign to increase the listenership and its participation. You know, I came up with a, would somebody would consider an original idea, but it's not. It's part of the job. How do you increase participation by your audience? That's what you're doing. That's what you're selling. That's what you're running on the board. And you're trying to, you know, that you're part of so-called so management, you know, okay. so-called. Okay. How, how come to today nothing meaningful has been implemented? What is the mechanism to beat here? What can we do different? in 2024 that hasn't been done hundreds of good ideas hundreds okay Campaign. thank you very, thank okay. you very You're welcome. much all right thank you all right okay all right um does does the order does the the candidates want to um address that um uh, gloria i'd like to address that this is jack i am a candidate the, the problem is I had to unpack and get into the apartment. And like I said, I just came back from Maine. Oh, okay, Jack. I'm sorry. So I would tell Mario three things. Uh, number one, the radio station is much better off financially in New York City over the last 20 years because we're not uh, uh, buying uh, our services for antenna from the Empire State Building. Uh, that changed the economic circumstance in Pacific considerably. Uh, they let it hang for a good five years, I believe. Keep yeah, Everybody was pointing their finger at each other, Mario, and Nobody was solving the problem that the balloon payment was ballooning and floating away with millions of dollars as we made believe that we could afford the Radio City uh, Music Hall and the Empire State Building, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Empire State Building Realty Trust is the loan, the big loan, Mario. Uh, number two, Mario, with the station still exists, uh, there were people banging on the door, took the radio station off the air in October. Some I, I was on the railroad coming home from Albany. And my sad part to point out to you, Mario, is that those people haven't gone away. They actually took $200,000 from the foundation and convinced people like you that we're failures because they wanted to take us off the air, Mario. I don't know what you thought was going to happen after they took us off the air, but they did and they had a lot of power and they tried to do it and they succeeded, if not for a judge in, in New York about union law. It had nothing to do with radio station or FCC. And I think number three, Mario, is that sometimes when something is, you know, like when you're cooking the soup, Mario, you don't like, you know, oh, the soup is done in 12 minutes. Uh, the continuity of a network or a radio station or even an entity like a, a social justice uh, uh, entity, and I'm sure everybody here, including Gloria and Jim and James and me and, and Mitchell as well, uh, these, these organizations are being attacked. And the reason why they're being attacked, Mario, is because people say things on them that sometimes are really, you know, uh, what's the right word? Incendiary? It upsets the apple cart? I'm not wanting to upset the apple cart, Mario. I'm just trying to tell you that for the last 20 years, WBAI has survived and th hasn't thrived, hasn't grown. It's actually shrunk. But we paid our bills. We, we fended off the internal conflicts. And we continue to survive and maintain. maintain. It's called continuity. It's a very important thing in the... 
uh, 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 mathematics. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Gloria. Oh, it, oh. it sounds good. That sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Jack, you really hadn't had a chance to introduce yourself. Um, I'm going to give you two minutes to just talk a little bit about who you are. And thank um, you very much. And I, I really, like I said, I don't want to. I don't want to come in at the end of the conversation. No, no, no. But but you, every I will do that. candidates have a chance. So no, no, know. no. Thank you very much. I I appreciate that you're having this. Uh, I do not think that these things should be broadcast. But what uh, uh, what Martha said is true. I was on a uh, uh, an August arranged by Keziah Glow on the air. It doesn't make for good radio, as Jim Sagerton said. Uh, I believe that the LSB report is necessary. We have to know what's going on at the radio station. And recording this and having this, uh, we may be talking to each other, Jim. I think we need another 150 people to vote, and I would recommend everybody vote. Okay, Jack DePalma, I'm a retired science teacher, uh, city of New York, 32 years. I've been listening to the radio station since I'm a teenager. Uh, it was originally the music that drew me in, the Incredible String Band, back in 1966, 67, 68, 69. Uh, I kind of didn't listen to the radio station. And, you know, off and on, I used to have a midnight job and I would listen to the radio station because they did play music. They did have conversation. They did have interesting things to put on the radio in the middle of the night when you're alone in a cab, uh, driving around the city. It, it, was, it was always entertaining, uh, in my understanding. Uh, I am for the independent uh, candidates. Uh, including mostly the people that are here. And I believe that we have to remember that, as I said to, to, the, to the listener caller, uh, we have to remember that we are really in a very fragile environment. New York City is a very expensive place, and uh, we haven't always you know, paid our bills. And there are people that are saying, well, when are you going to pay that? And when are you going to be good for that? And we're not if we kind of don't have compelling radio, compelling music, compelling talk, uh, that, that has a broad base or at least enough niche to, to, to get 1% or half a percent. We, we can't survive on a tenth of a percent, as Jim Dingman has said so many times before. And uh, uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming and caring. I think if everybody's voted, that's all I could say. We should all vote. Uh, to point out that we're not influencing anybody. There's only three more days or two more days left of the voting uh, opportunity. And uh, I just wanted to tell Jim, I was up there by the uh, FDR drive, Jim, and I was thinking of you. So <laughs> I, I just came back from uh, traveling uh, uh, from about 10 o'clock this morning. So thank you very much, Gloria. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, we have another question or does someone in, the, in our group have a question they want to ask the candidates? Uh, Carolyn here, I would like to ask a question. Yes. Go ahead, Carolyn, thank you. Uh, thank you, those of you who don't know me. I've been around Pacifica entirely, not too long, but very long. And uh, I have a, a background in, in teaching, over 45 years of teaching, uh, research writing, technical writing, all kinds of writing, uh, and English language and literature. Uh, I'm retired now, and I'm back at, at BAI for, uh, after a hiatus of a few years, and I'm Kind of appalled at how how uh, much work there is to be done. Uh, one of my interests is in reaching members. I'm a member of the CAB, uh, which I was before I got on the board. Uh, I, I wanted to, and I'm still working on a survey of our listeners. What do you? I'd like to know from the members, from everybody on, on this call, uh, whether you're candidates or not. What? do you think is the one thing that would help us? Just one. I've gotten some pretty ordinary answers. We have all their demographics. We know who they are, where they are, where they live, uh, married, single, proximate age, etc. But what do you think that would help us to know about people in our catchment area? We have a huge catchment area. The boroughs, um, I used to ride down to, in my commuting to Philadelphia, I used to get down to Princeton in my car, in New Jersey. We don't reach those people. What do you think we should know about our listeners in order to um, push some programming that would attract them? And everybody else in this business is on multimedia except us. Where do you think we should be besides radio? Uh, those two questions, if anybody has a short answer. And if you want to write to me later, I'd love to have a long answer. But in the meanwhile, um, I'd love to have an, a short answer from everyone. 
Okay, um, let's start with uh, Charles. Uh, Charles, um, what should we know about our audience and how can we encourage their participation? Did I frame that, uh, Carolyn? Yeah, that that's that's good. What what would what do they need? What do they want? And and what should what what one thing sh should we know about them that's really crucial that we don't already have if they're if they're listeners. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, Charles. Yes, um, I think that is a a, a little um, a little difficult um, thing to just say in one word uh, because. Um, what makes people unique, one group uh, could be different from what makes another group tick. Um, my, my need might not be the need of somebody uh, in Lower Manhattan or somebody who is in, a, in another catchment area. But what I think is, for example, I live in the Bronx, I work in the Bronx. Uh, I mix with uh, some people who come from uh, other parts of the world, but certain here. Um, some of them have need for the care about the children, what programming will benefit my children, some benefit about what programming will promote my faith, uh, some I think what programming will make me know who to vote for and make sure my vote counts. Um, so what I think is, um, I do not think we can just make a prediction, though we could, but the accuracy of a prediction might be difficult to, to know. Um, I think is somebody in that catchment area, somebody who is part and parcel of that area might be the person that will know for sure what um, that area might need. But generally, we know that people care for the legislation that cares about them, uh, that speaks their language, um, that mentions them, that discusses issue of uh, daily living, things that put food on the table and things that make them secure. So security is, a, is an issue. So it, it takes somebody who is rooted in that area to know for sure what um, what gels, except the general thing that I've mentioned earlier. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how about uh, Jack De Palma? Can you um, I'm respond sorry, to I didn't, that? I didn't hear the question. I was responding to uh, 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 Mitchell. Mitchell, thank you. I tried to turn uh, uh, Paul on to WBAI back in 1981, 82, 83, 84. I did succeed in turning them on to the Who, and they succeeded in turning me on to the Ramones, uh, the Bad Brains, and a variety of other things. Uh, Mitchell, Mitchell was uh, informed that my uh, former student was a punk rocker uh, when I became part of the LSB. He, uh, he did a little, uh, little uh, search of my name in terms of what happened with Paul Bakia and David Rubenstein who are the core of the Reagan youth, which was a form of parody. Uh, uh, Paul's, uh, Paul's father was from Yugoslavia, mother from Yugoslavia, and uh, uh, Dave, Dave uh, Rubenstein was from uh, uh, Holocaust parents. And they got together in the junior school and they realized that they were not supposed to be friends. One guy's a Jewish guy, one guy's a, uh, an Eastern uh, Christian guy. And uh, 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 they, they formed a punk band that was making fun of Ronald Reagan. It was, it was genius. And you had to be there because I was there. I was the teacher of Paul and uh, 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 I was caught up in the spontaneity and the creativeness of their uh, genius. Uh, as far as the caller is concerned, I do apologize. Uh, I think I know the fellow, but I'm sorry if I identified his voice out loud. Uh, I don't mean to uh, say caller. Uh, I, I, I know your name because I know your name. Uh, I, I, someday we could cook together and I'll, I'll enjoy your food. Uh, but we should be friends. We shouldn't be enemies. That's the problem in Pacifica. And uh, Gloria, I don't know what the question was, so I will not. I'll just, I'll just restate it. This is a question that Carolyn proposed. And she said, you know, um, what should we know about our audience so that we can. We don't know enough. We, we, right, there's so was, much. There's, no, so uh, Carolyn's funny. absolutely right. Her her uh, her survey was, was, was not targeted close enough, but there's so much information that we have to develop that we don't have. Uh, in other words, if you really want to target something, you have to figure out what your what your 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 your, your uh, target is. And uh, part of the problem that Kaziah has, part of the problem that Linda has uh, had, uh, part of the problem we've had for 30, 40, 50 years is that New York City is the most diverse community in the world, I think. 
and uh, uh, people that don't listen to the radio station should. And then finally, uh, uh, we we have to target and, and 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 develop that. We have to find ways to develop that. I I don't listen to K-pop, but sometimes I do. <laughs> so I would just say that that's a very difficult uh, nut to crack, and we should really the network and the station should have made a, a purpose behind that. Uh, years ago, Carolyn is absolutely right. It's, it's a listener survey could reveal things that we don't really appreciate. And the, the other thing is that we still need support and we still need people to vote. So I encourage everybody to recognize that democracy, uh, uh, participatory democracy seems to be, from my studies of what happened in Greece or what happened throughout history, it's really one of those very difficult things that people do not engage in. And they don't really understand how to do it. So I... I'll I'll leave it at that. I don't really understand sometimes why people don't get it, uh, why free speech radio and democracy radio is really uh, critical for, uh, 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 again, we, we, we all listener owners. I just don't like to say that we're uh, shareholders. So thank you. Okay, so thank Carol, you so much. May I interrupt, uh, Gloria, just to clarify something? Okay. Um. I, I did pen, put out a few questions about six months ago uh, as a start. I never meant it as the entire survey. It was just the beginning. And it was pretty general. But let, let me rephrase. Um, Sanchez writes a very difficult question. Uh, what do we need to know? Let me put it this way. What, what do you think we should be offering our listeners? It can't be all 25 languages that are spoken in our Chachman area. That's an impossibility. So what actually should we be aiming for in uh, bringing in new listeners? Uh, is it feedback time? Is it content? Is it more of this, more of that, less of something? Uh, what, what do you think? Okay, let's go to uh, Jim Dingman. All right, well, I agree with a lot of uh, what Charles was saying. Um, and then we have to have this organic kind of questioning going on all the time. It can't be just like a one shot. You know, I've been par I participated in general surveys of our listenership uh, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Uh, and we have to constantly have an interaction with the public in New York City and the tri-state area at all times. We have to be asking them what they like, what they don't like, what they think we're doing wrong, what we can do to better serve their needs. And it's going to be all over the place, admittedly. It's going to be all over the place. But we have to have that constant interaction, frankly, 24-7. So, you know, I've been around when we wanted to send out uh, surveys. Uh, at one point, we're going to put them into all the premiums and send them out. We have to do this with, uh, with, with, with uh, analog type of surveys. You know, just send, you know, just make something up. You know, let's ask questions like, what, 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 what do they think we should do? in terms of covering the elections? What should we do in terms of music shows? What should we do in your neighborhood? Okay, that's one level. The other level is to uh, set up on the website constant uh, going back and forth as to what uh, people want to hear and need to know. A third thing is if we're going to take seriously the, because people love to talk about, ah, you represent the community and all that stuff. Well, I used to talk to our former news director, Jose Santiago, and one of the things we always used to talk about is how important it would be to send four or five people to a community board. One of the community boards in New York City plop themselves there for a month or two and start asking people, what are the issues that affect you as New Yorkers at the grassroots level? We never did that kind of stuff. And I should add that journalism schools, when they're teaching people how to beat reporters, that's what they do. And, you know, there's all these things we could do that require mobilization uh as much less fractious bs that goes on all the time and just to bring up two things before i finish you know when we were doing the bylaws years ago uh i argued to have a listener radio show every month and that was voted down in the bylaws precisely to deal with the kind of questions we're talking about now in other words the listeners have audio they're they're part of the democratic process we have here let them express their their grievances through the air and that was voted down by those who did not want that who by the way are the uh, tend to be on the other side of the aisle here in terms of the people we uh oppose 
uh, or disagree with. Uh, but yeah, we, we need to get a lot of harmony together and we got to listen to young people. As far as I'm concerned, we should have Generation Z take this whole damn thing over and take over the whole operation. And that is what I think would be a good outcome of all this. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. How about um, James Sagerton? Thank you, Gloria. Um, I want to go to Mario's question briefly first. And he used one word, and it's a good word, implementation. And he asks a good question. And right now we have very low staff in terms of ability to implement. We have an aging demographic. Our listeners, our members are becoming older and older. And long gone are the good old days when we had a 500,000 QM on a glorious week back in the days of the Vietnam War. Um, you know, now we're lucky if we have a 50,000 QM. And we don't have that mass of volunteers, people who are eager to get a chance to be on the air, who want to come in and do every kind of volunteer work in order to earn that chance. Those days are long gone. So we have to focus on what we're going to implement and we have to use what we've got to implement it. And so what I say is we need to mine our own resources. We have decades worth of contact information. This is an idea I got from Mitch Cohen, who was one of my early mentors when I first started coming around. He said, let's do a rolling mailing. Let's get the, let's get a mailing out to our entire list, our entire contact list. Do the A, A, B, and C first, then D, E, and F, and then onward. And also, let's contact our lapsed members and our prior members on the phone with phone banks. Those are things we can do. Um, it's a focused activity. It doesn't cost much. And it's something we can do. And that hopefully will tide us over until we figure out what our long-term plan is going to be. Because as was pointed out earlier, right now, this month, we have brought in about $7,000 through regular day-to-day -day donations from listeners. Normally, in a month, we would have brought in $70,000. The only thing that's keeping us alive right now is the $222,000 bequest we got, plus the union money that we're getting. But that's not going to be sustainable. Even Bob Henley has acknowledged that he doesn't plan that as a long-range strategy. It's, um, you know, eventually that's going uh, to dry up. So let's do these inexpensive things we can do now while we transition ourselves into the internet where, you know, for God's sakes, let's get on YouTube. It's the biggest publisher in the world right now. Children do it. We can do it. We can multiply our hits, our audience <coughs> hundreds of times just by putting what we're doing on YouTube. That's how Amy Goodman did her early initial expansion. And to go quickly to Carolyn's question about what does our audience need? One thing they want and they need is news. Local news has been disappearing as newspapers are folding left and right. <coughs> Communities are looking for local news. We can provide some of that, as was mentioned, going to city council meetings, going to um, community board meetings and sitting in and learning and, and uh, reporting on what's happening. Our audiences are hungry for that kind of local news. That's something we could do now and provide a, uh, for a need for our audience. Um, also, you know, we, we, as Carolyn mentioned, we have a, a big footprint. We are heard all the way down to middle and southern New Jersey. We're heard in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. We're heard in the southwest corner of Connecticut. We've all through Long Island. We've got a huge audience area. Catchment basement is, I think, what she called it. And yeah, there's lots of opportunity out there to expand from our 0.1%. We could expand to 0.2%, 0.3%, and survive and go on to the next generation and actually have an impact and an audience such that we can actually move the needle in some of the national conversations. That's my dream. Thank you. Um, Martha, would you like to uh, answer um, Carolyn Burden's question? Yeah, I think uh, uh, 
other people have has have answered really with excellent and eloquent ideas that I agree with. I um I do think it's important for us to to take advantage of of video platforms like YouTube and and uh, um, Rumble. Rumble. See, and uh, and I think it's important also to find out from our audience what other platforms they are using where else they're they are going with uh, for, for music for news for discussion for information for art for whatever um i also think that it, i i really like the idea that that both um J jim and uh i think was it james who just spoke or was it jack yeah. like, jim and james <laughs> um about the idea of this the uh local news and i think that would be a fabulous way to engage listeners with citizen journalism encourage listeners to go to uh public meetings like the uh local police um community c community policing meetings that they have once a month uh, in in each in each district the uh the community boards uh various other uh, political um, and uh, not just political, but other kinds of uh, um, community events, and then report back. Maybe there could be a citizen journalism program uh, once a week or once a month where we got sit, we got listeners to come in and report. I realize that that could be messy, but I think it could also, if if there were certain guidelines and 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 uh, rules of engagement, uh, I think it would be a great way to get to get uh, listeners involved and engaged, and it would be great news too because people uh, just citizen journalism is a fabulous kind of journalism. We see an awful lot of the best journalism is coming out of people just going out and finding out what's going on. Thank you, Martha. Um, okay, so now we are almost at eight o'clock. We've been here for almost two hours. <laughs> so um, I think, does anyone have a really important question that they want to ask, or should I just ask? Uh, well, Carolyn asked for the, I would like to answer Carolyn's question. She said the public, anyone here in the meeting. Oh, okay. All right. We got me. Oh, we got um uh, yeah, do go okay, quick. Go yeah, you got to increase if you have a radio station, the whole thing if you hear other radio stations, they want to increase the participation, the action and participation of their audience. They have events. They have uh, uh so in this case BAI would be town hall meetings in in person. Uh, you have to have tabling, you have to expose yourself, you have to increase your audience's participation on the air, taking more calls, having uh, audience people come in, be guests on the show. What is, what is their incentive to keep supporting if they don't get anything out of it? Sorry to say. Oh, no, the show is the premium. They're getting the show. It, it, yeah, well, it's not working. You've got to give more. That you know, you got to increase their participation, and and that doesn't cost money, and you have to go out to other communities, other nationalities. I'm going to stop this word communities here in this in this point. You have to go out to other nationalities, and get them involved in the radio station, per our mission statement. You know, uh, per the mission statement. You can't, and, and, and if you listen to the radio show the, as a whole, the, the, the whole week of this, of this radio station, it's blame and shame and point the finger radio. There's a place for that. But 24-7, you know, there's a time where people want arts and they just want some like funny phone calls and they want to hear music. I left a message to Bob Henley saying, hey, can we stop that stuff after maybe 7 p.m.? And then from eight to like the rest of the till midnight, just do like leisurely stuff. Can we just like cut the like get, get the government, get the government and racism, racism and uh, uh, gay gays uh, are being mistreated 
and all this stuff. This is, it needs to be said, but how much? And it seems like it's a lazy attitude when we, when a show goes off the air or we need a slot, what do they do? They fill it with the same stuff. And then some of the same people who are not, it's not their nationality, but they'll cover the other people's nationality. And it's the same thing. And it just continues to stretch. 65%, I would, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll challenge, is black issues and racism. The rest is gay, feminism, and a little bit of music. That, that's calling it the way it is. Now, how are you going to survive when you alienate the rest of the community based on your own mission statement and, and the bylaws? Just quite simply, I'm going to say good night, follow the bylaws and the mission statement, and don't get crafty with vocabulary words about how we can navigate around the mission statement and the bylaws. Just follow the bylaws. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have one more hand up. Let's see. Um, uh, 718 300. It, who's that? Do you want to, did you want to speak your hands up? Hello. We have a hand up, but nobody's coming in. 718-300-8963. You have to unmute. I think that's Denise. Uh, let's see. Un asked to unmute. Okay. I just sent a message. Oh, I think something happened. She unmuted. Okay. Hello? No, it's unmuted, but uh, no, nothing. Okay. Well, it's getting kind of Hello? late. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, we can. Gracious. That's All right. Um, I think... Um, I think that Mario has some great ideas pertaining to um, uh, issues. However, I think many of the issues that are, that are posed as being racial difficulties is really an American 99% of the population difficulty. And that's why people don't see the relevancy of it. Um, I'm gonna bring a flyer out tomorrow asking a question, how many media programs that you've listened to that's covered um, the selling of, our, of the public water to private sectors, the, um, the selling of our air, just the environment above our heads to private sectors, the um, poisoning of our environment through packaging. These are situations and information that everybody wants, but they don't hear about it on, on the regular media. So I'm asking the question, if you haven't heard it about there, and it's an absolute necessity that you know about it, why are you listening to that station and not us? The other reason why they don't listen is they become overwhelmed by the problem, but not the solution. We really have to get experts that have solutions to these problems, rudimentary, political, et cetera. Um, the implementation, we're very weak at implementation as well. We, the, everybody here had excellent ideas, but we don't implement them. If somebody would volunteer to say, I'll, I'll go to the next community advisory board meeting. In fact, if I'm gonna find what's the next police um, community meeting and I will volunteer and go to it and see how I can bring some feedback to that. Uh, with Carolyn's um, questionnaire, I'm sure that people want answers. Most of us know the problems, well, we don't know how to resolve them. And we need to get experts to do that. And that's for the debate. I think the debate should be held on the radio, on air. We did it last year. I think it was successful. We, the listeners were able to at least um, choose WLSB members that were able to beat back those who want to really take the vote away from the public, the at least the second choice vote away from the public. We were able to choose LSB members that were effective enough to at least save that. And we need to know about the LSB representatives. We need to hear, I thought it was, I thought it was very well done that what Linda did last year. And I think it should have been implemented again. That's why 
we are having the difficulty that we're having now. I will say, because it was aired last year, the people that voted had more knowledge of the people that they were choosing this particular time. I don't think we'll be as successful. But um, we just kind of have to, I think yeah, it should be on air. And also feedback time, uh, um, the voice of the listen, the public has the answers. Uh, we have to open the ears for the public. If we have to tell them you only have one minute and make it uh, standardized so that you can get maybe 10 individuals in 10 or 13 minutes uh, a slot, then we have to do that. But we have to open those lines to get feedback. And yes, we should have some kickback time on the radio as well, as Mario said, some music and some funny stuff and things of that nature. Thank you. Oh, Gloria? Yeah. Yes. This is, this is Jack. I, I, I may I may ask, uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt. I, 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 like to, I like to answer that. I like to say something. Please, please. Uh, yes, the, the idea that we have uh, listeners call in is a very good idea. The problem with the LSP is that the listeners call in or, or attend the meeting, but we don't have an ability to respond. It's near impossible for us to respond to just a question because there are 20 people, 20, 22 people, 21 people, and 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 it might take up the whole hour, two hours, three hours. I, I do remember that in the past, they did have listener statements, which they do have now. They had a uh, two different shows. Some people didn't attend. I don't understand why they couldn't get their candidate uh, together to get on the air. Uh, but I remember in August, because I was on the air, and the, the listeners had some interesting questions, and the caller has some very interesting questions. But the, the truth is, is that you can't just... Uh, uh, the LSB is diverse, and the radio station is diverse, and there's not one answer that will ever fill the bill. I think I think the the the, the issue is very difficult to kind of get around because that's what we have we have that's that's our greatest strength, and uh, even though it's true that the other caller says that we should kind of throttle back on some of the stuff that we put on the air, uh, that's not under our control. Uh, we're just advisors or or observers, and uh, our our support should be that we are doing that mission, which is helping people to real, realize that there are many voices, many diverse voices, and how to how to ameliorate that, how to bring bring consensus or, or peace to the to this. Uh, and, and he's right also about that other point. I, I always wondered about that word community. People from all over the world listen to WBAI. We should be very proud of that. And we, we have, as, as the, as the, uh, the chat said, we have, we have great African music. <laughs> we, we had the most eclectic music all the time. And if you don't want to listen to Reggie in the middle of the night, go on about what he's talking about, uh, uh, caller, uh, you could always shut it off. That's the pleasure of having a radio station. So have more uh, listener environment participation but the problem is a lot of times the listeners are really you know they're just listening they're they're they're, they're listening to music or they're not listening as jim might just point out we have to get participation for more voting and it's really hard to tell the program director this will get the people to participate or to listen and give you money so we're, we're kind of in a bit of a quandary in the we're chasing our tail but our tail doesn't have the you know the the, the million two that we need every year it's 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 a catch me pull me and i'm not really aware about how the mechanism works yet so thank you very much okay we're we're thank you we're we're getting um up to our 2 hour mark so i'm going to um just summarize what what we've done here tonight and then um read our uh, closing statement so i i would just like to say this was a um lsb election of uh, forum and uh, we had six candidates that participated and some of the key things that really all our candidates seem to agree on is that more local news is necessary um, and that um, citizen journalism would be great going to community board meetings going to um, uh, policing meetings uh, also um, people you know, our, our candidates felt very strongly that they were in agreement that there needs to be more debate. And actually the conflict makes for good radio. So um, I actually recall a show that I watched as a kid, which was called Counterpoint. And I'm sure, you know, many people on this call also watched that. And it was really where, you know, two people argued and I enjoyed it. And I was, you know, a kid. So I think debate is, you know, really also, I, I, I agree with our candidates. 
Um, another thing was to focus more on local talent. And um, that would be live theater and music. And to, you know, really um, promote what goes on in New York. Um, another, another thing that everyone seemed to agree on is listener surveys and really understanding, um, you know, multiple groups within uh, the city and what they're looking for and what they want so that we can engage them. Um, another thing that everyone seemed to agree with is the need to have more young people participating and, um, and to evolve into a multi-platform um, situation where we have our uh, airwaves, but we also have, you know, um, things that other people are used to, such as um, YouTube and Rumble and all of that stuff. So that, those are things that, that everyone seemed to agree with. So um, I, I would like to thank all our candidates and I'd also like to thank all our um, listeners on this call. We had um, several um, former board members and, and several present board members. Um, we have uh, Joan DiLorenza, we have Carolyn Burden, we have my, Mitchell Cohen, and um, I don't know Yoshio, um, it could be a board member. <laughs> So anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for stopping by. And um, I'd also like to just close it with, this was an open forum for all candidates running for the local station board elections. The views expressed here are those of the candidates, not of the radio station or the Pacifica Foundation. And the debate is not sponsored or endorsed by any one candidate. With that, I'd like to say thank you all for joining us and have a good evening. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Gloria. Thanks, Gloria. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for coming. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Um, I can't end the meeting. I can just leave it. Uh um, would someone like to end the meeting? <laughs>